tweet. Okay. Hey, pals. How you been? It still says guest host Andrew Lackey in the tweet. <laughs> Andrew Lackey is not with us, sadly. I love that guy. That went super well. Hey, Shifter. What's up about your fan? Nicholas Zhang Audio. Hey, man. Hey, I'm really sorry about uh, about neglecting to highlight your your um, your feature. I apologize. December hit us kind of like a truck, and real talk was sadly not at the top of our priorities. So, or at least at the front of our minds, to say it a different way. Tuning in for two. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up? Yeah, and yeah, Nick. And keep in mind if you have any. Like further questions or clarifications or anything. I mean, I'm I'm more than usually for yourself since we didn't actually save it. I'd be happy to to go over anything again, you know, or to look over any any changes or improvements you've made since. That sounds good too. Let's do that. Okay. Otherwise, oh my. Ugh. Let me just stand up for a second <laughs> before I can see before I keep sitting down for 90 more minutes. One second. Oh, and I encourage you all to do the same. Holy. Oh. <sighs> Should get up once in a while. Get the retro shirt on. Oh. Okay. We're back. We're back for 2018. Matt esque. Matthew Martinson's in the chat. We're gonna look at some more reels, yeah? <laughs> Thank you all for your patience while we took December off. I hope you all had a good holiday. Happy New Year as well. Um, Candy Composer, what's up? Husky, Chicago, everyone rolling in. Uh, we had a pretty exciting start of the year. I power up. Hey, Andrew, good to see you, man. Um, freaking IGF, yo. So, there's some sick games up here. This lineup's nuts. But included in here, we have, uh, if, if you don't know, first off, the IGF is the Independent <sighs> Games Festival. Here it is. And the main competition finalists at uh, GDC this March were announced yesterday. So, in this list, in the grand prize, we have Into the Breach, which we're working on. Joey Goddard at Power Up is doing a lot of the design there with a little bit of support, support from the rest of the team. And uh, down in visual art, we have a mention for Tooth and Tail, which we worked on. We've got Excellence in Audio Celeste, which you are listening to right now from FMOD, direct from the game assets. <laughs> So that's pretty sick. I've been cranking hard on that one. And the team's been super supportive as well, helping me out with that. And as well, a uh, again, I mentioned for Tooth and Tail. We couldn't quite, quite snag two nominations. <laughs> but but the uh, I'm, I'm pumped slices there. It's pretty exciting. I think my pick to win is Cuphead. Tormentor is also our pal uh, Jonas Turner from Finland. It's his game. It's, it's, he did the whole thing, to my knowledge at least. And it sounds sick. Rain World also sounds sick. I don't know this as well, hence why these these two are clicked. You can see the links are clicked already. Um, I don't know Runog Rune Limited very well. I I think I think I know some of their past stuff, but I don't I'll, I'll have to look into it and play some of it. And vignettes, same thing, no idea. I've never played it before, so I'll have to have a look at that too. And then down in narrative, Tooth and Tail. Actually got a nom in that case, so not just the uh, the mentions. So we've got one for audio and two otherwise. So I'm pretty pumped. It's a good, good start of the year. Ugh. But anyways, uh, we are looking at Juan Carlos Garcia and Angel. Angel. For the KSR, what's up, Penguin Dude? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's Mitchell, right? Am I correct with that? It's been a while. It's been about a month. Um, we're looking at Juan Carlos Garcia and 
Jamie Molloy, who doesn't need our help at all, by the way. This guy got hired at Ninja Theory. I think he began there in December, like late December. So we uh, we had it scheduled originally for the um, 444, like December 3rd or 4th or something like that. And then we just pff, nixed December like no way. We, we got to focus here. And uh, I'm sure Matt appreciated the break as well. And then he goes and gets hired anyways. <laughs> so, okay, there he is. What's up? Jane Molloy, Molloy Sound in, in, in the chat. Congrats, pal. You start on January 22nd. Well, I mean, perhaps this reel will shed some light on why you got hired. And I'm sure that you interviewed very well as well if you managed to snipe that job. So, good stuff. Pretty rad. Uh, I don't really have any real preference as to who to, be, who to begin with. I'm curious if uh, if Juan is here. I believe he hit us up on Twitter semi recently and was saying that. So the two months old game reel. Let's just do Jamie first since he's here. Easy enough. I'll stop. I'll put a stop to Celeste here. Sorry, one second. Okay. Fado. Lovely. Let's I might show some of this later on. This is by the way, before we get started, this is the this is the whole F mod session that we have <laughs> like loose plans to release to the public. Like with assets and all. Um with some end user agreement, like don't use this in your game kind of thing. But just for educational purposes, here's the thing. Kind of like limbo, but with the sound included, not just a framework. We also released our Darkest Dungeon uh, session, kind of. Again, it was kind of, it was just like the the framework and with all audio stripped, but you could kind of like put in your own stuff and then rebuild banks a certain way. It was, it was super convoluted. But yes, yeah, so the idea being that you could look through and see how we did things. I was thinking about going through and doing stuff like, uh, for example, where am I looking here? So maybe under like dialogue, under something like um, Madeline Mirror, I could put some notes here like, this is how this event works, you know? And just sort of put some notes there and or record some some commentary. It depends how crazy we want to get with the production quality on the tutorial stuff, basically. But I do want to at least go through and like put some kind of context for some of the weirder events. And it might be some work because I'll have to look at stuff I did like a year ago. And be like, oh, okay, past Kevin, what, what were we even doing here? And then it's figuring it out. But uh, I know that that's one thing that has been kind of expressed as missing in the game audio scene is a like a solid um, FMOD example project. There's like examples.fs pro that comes with FMOD when you download it, but it's like, I mean, it's okay, but it's really a lot of kind of technical, just tutorialized examples of v random things out of context. Whereas this ideally would be like here, like this is, the, this is, we're doing it. Like it's in the game, this is it, have a look kind of thing. As opposed to just here's a here's like a footstep and theoretically you could have like more services or something like that, you know? So anyways, well, uh, we're, we're probably gonna do that in some respect, but we'll see what happens. I might even send it off to, to Firelight first to be like, hey, are we doing anything dumb? <laughs> like do some optimizations and maybe like a patch or something like maybe a, a month or two after release and then release it or something like that. So we'll see. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the reels, yes? Yes, IGF over here, please. Jamie, congrats again. Pretty pretty sick that uh, you got hired. So I'm pumped to see what you what you, what you brought, to, brought to the table, you know? Um, okay, oh, what's up? Shell in the pit in the chat says I would definitely get Firelight involved. Yeah, they'd be pumped to also. I did talk to them last GEC about um, about this. I talked to Brett a bit and some other staff. I don't know if they're still there though. I talked to Patrick a little bit as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're fully on board. And I mean, why wouldn't they be, right? Just here is here is a project that you can look at that helps use our, use our tools. Why not? So we'll see. Um, oh, and you are too, Matt. That's pretty rad. What's up, Bean in the chat? And Sclathville has Seattle, man. And thank you. Yeah, if you're saying congrats for IGF stuff, appreciate that. 
Okay, so here's Jamie's site. Pretty simple, simple enough. Got some links. Vimeo, SoundCloud. Curious, let's see. SoundCloud we got, last thing, 17 days ago. Killer. Yeah, awesome. Good first track. Uh, okay, let's go into okay LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. What's up? Yeah, he's doing it. Look at this. Good stuff. This handsome, well-dressed man. Okay, into projects. This is fully like a, a, a template site, but it's fine. Looks good. Hellblade, color, Mass Effect Andromeda, redesign. Sea of Thieves, redesign. Um, Advert, redesign. Hyperlitrophy, redesign. Titanfall 2, redesign. Transformers, redesign. A lot of redesign stuff. Angry Bots, here's like a full implementation. And Iron Man, opening Rescore and Rescore. Cool, so like Rescore, some music stuff and some sound stuff. Rescore kind of at the very bottom which implies heavily that you're, compo you're sound design first and composer second. And uh, I guess we'll see. Like audio redesign. Um, about. Oh, and I'll say as well that that's pretty cool that there's this span of stuff like Hellblade and Hyperlight are like two very, very different projects, obviously. So interesting. About a raw pause. It's Cole Vertiber. Our, our newest hire at Power Up Audio. What's up, man? Um, okay, so my objective. Here he is. In the woods. <laughs> my objective is to create unique, innovative, and memorable audio experiences for your fans. For your fans. Okay. Is this like... I'll keep going. Having been a gamer and lover of audio for the majority of my life, I understand the importance of audio in games and the impact it can have on the experience. I want to use my technical skills, knowledge, and creativity to make your game sound the best it possibly can. I love games and have an in-depth understanding of what makes one successful. I take pride in my ability to design and imp implement audio to an exceptionally high standard with creativity and originality. I'm a proficient composer and musician and therefore understand the importance of sound design in conjunction with music. Yes, I was kind of clear on that, that demo reel page, or sorry, the, the products page. Uh, or a symbol, at least, you know. I can use a variety of DAWs and software, including Reaper, Logic Pro, blah, blah, blah. Cool, Studio and Wise, great. Uh, I consider myself to be sociable and a great communicator and coordinator. This is very, very like resume, 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 rather than like more like cover letter kind of kind of scene here, apart from like rather than a bio, I suppose. Which is interesting. It's an in in interesting approach. Um, yeah, exactly, shifter. So like the <laughs> just my objective is to find a, a way out of these damn woods. Yeah, <laughs> it's trying to find us a way out. Where are those breadcrumbs? Um, yeah, it's this is a weird about page, honestly. But you got hired, so I mean, this is all gonna be like. Anything we found we find weird was obviously um, not found weird by by Ninja Theory, or it was found weird and then like it was just outweighed by your interview process probably. So we'll see. But I mean, my my feeling is that usually pages are not like this, where it's where it's like aimed at an employer or something. I mean, this first sentence confused me. That's why I paused there. Right? I was like, I don't know what you're saying about my fans because this is I guess this is this is assuming heavily that someone's landed on this page because you gave them the page in a job application right and they haven't found you randomly or something and if that's I mean if you, if your page is that extremely focused in its in its viewership then cool it's probably effective again you got hired <laughs> so I, mean, it's, I guess it's working but yeah I mean if, if you don't if you don't know who's reading it, this might be, be a little weird. And Matt's saying the bullet point is kind of weird too. But it's very this is very like resume cover letter kind of material. So yeah, and embedded Instagram stuff. Here he is. Okay, uh, blog. 
place your bets, I'm guessing two months ago. August 6th, okay, a little bit more than that, like four months ago, is that right, five? Okay, cool, London Game Audio Meetup, who's in this crowd? Anyone we know? Uh, no, but it's also a poor picture. It's hard to see faces. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure there's one or two in there. But uh, yeah, rad. Cool stuff. Just showing you're involved. You're around. It's good stuff. Joust, do you, ever, do you guys ever reconnect with Real Talk alumni on the show? We've talked about that. We, I mean, it's, it's kind of come up in conversation in general, just on Twitter or, or Facebook or wherever, about uh, kind of who is now working of folks that, that were on, on Real Talk at some point. So you might do it one day. It'd be kind of cool to bring on some folks, like as a guest host even, bring on like Barney Orem, who was the first person who got hired, to my knowledge, uh, who was on Real Talk um, at, at Cloud Imperium. Um, or Jamie, perhaps, at a later, at a later date. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it could be really cool to kind of get that, get that little, bit, little bit of a, uh, a, a, an inside scoop on how things are going so far, kind of thing. You know, re real talk. <clears throat> yeah, the groupie is exactly Chicago. You got it. Um, okay, cool. Back to the, back to the, I guess, contact. We'll have a glance at here. Uh, Page is still, is still lost. Um, I'm always looking to work on new projects. Yeah, see, this is more generalized, you know? Like on new projects, but then this is like your fans, or, or about your fans, I don't know. It's kind of weird, but whatever. Home is not where the homepage lands. Oh, good point. This is a weird home. <laughs> this is a useless page. I think this, this picture is superfluous. It's a nice photo, but I mean, it's the same thing as as like this and this, you know? I do appreciate the cohesion across the pages, but I think that this is kind of, A, you, you're you requiring someone to click home, and when they click home, there's just a picture of you, <laughs> you know? So it's kind of weird. I feel like having this as like a faded background to their demo reel or something like that might be better, or I don't know, or just not have it at all. It's It's kind of a weird link. Lost in the woods. I thought I could. Um, let's watch it. Full volume. Turn my side chain off. Um, oh, what's up? Gnome Guterman. Hey, guys. First timer here. Well, welcome on in. Welcome on in. Full screen. Uh, let's go to... I think I can do HD. Will that be HD? Let's make sure. The HD link's here, isn't it? I don't know. Okay, whatever. We'll just do it. We'll do it on the main page. That's fine. Okay, two minutes. Ooh, we'll see.
<clears throat> nice, man. I was, like, on on the verge of skipping ahead, like, three times. <laughs> but I didn't quite do it. I was like, ah, two minutes not so long. It was it was probably a bit longer than it had to be. But it was, it's, yeah, it's fine. Totally fine. Um, I'll tell you where I was most likely to skip ahead. It was right at the end of Sea of Thieves. Like, this whole downstairs thing. It was like, hmm. And the last one wasn't doing much, but I, I know it's not doing much for a reason, which is totally fine. Um, you know, you're, you're looking to show off specific sounds and like, look at this. It's kind of like isolation during gameplay. So it, ma it makes sense. Um, okay. So that juicy banana crunch. What's up, Mitchell? Good to see you, pal. Um, yeah, pretty good, man. Sounded great. I think that there was some weird choices creatively, but uh, also tons of reverb and maybe like inappropriate reverb in some cases. But that is like the main thing that stuck out to me was that the verb was really out front. But uh, yeah, it's cool. And this whole opening thing, it's like really kind of just arbitrary kind of just just fully blank canvas style design, right? This whole opening here. Also, sound at the top. Boom. It's cool. It was a bit of a jump. I, I mean, maybe I would have gone a bit more, but if you want that big impact off the front and you want to be jarring, then hey, maybe that's your that's your um, modus operandi. Yo, gnome, sorry for noobness. I ah, don't be sorry. Ask any question you, all, you want. That's why we're here. Can I send my reel or too late for that? Uh... Heck yeah, you can, anytime. I mean, basically, we, we often have a bit of a backlog. Right now, because it's the new year, we don't. We have like a week and a half of backlog or something like that. So if you want to tweet that at us or send it via our website or whatever, like this, this stuff down here, then we'll get back to you and slot you in. Okay. Uh, you didn't agree with some creative, creative traits, some of the creativity, not creative choices. But it was sold. Solid. It was solid. Personally, I'm getting a bit tired of that modern trailer aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of that, you know? A lot of that. It's it's kind of... I agree. I was like, oh, okay. All right. And when it comes to that stuff, it's just... Uh, it doesn't really stand out to me. It just... it What it does is it says, like, I can do this thing that is kind of expected to be done in modern cinematic stuff trailers, whatever, and that's fine, but it's not really setting you apart, you know? It's like when Austin Wintry was on here and listening to the the kind of big, majestic, huge, orchestral, like, Pirates-style soundtrack thing, and he's like, yeah, you can do that, but I mean, but it's the kind of thing where he's like, I, I would hope you can do that if you're looking to be hired by me or, or whatever. So, it just, I don't know, it's kind of Whatever. It, it was what it was, and it was good for me in that thing. I agree 100%. It's, it's not like, it's not for me personally, but this whole, like, doo -doo -doo, this, this whole opening, I was like, mm. <laughs> But it was good for what it was. It just is not for me. This whole, this whole opening. Like, for the first 15 seconds. A lot of like roller coastery stuff, right? So it's just, yeah, it's doing a good job of doing that thing. Um, <laughs> it's just, like, it was like almost to the point of character for me, but it was it was a lot. Yeah, it was it was a, it was a little bit much. Um, I would say it's a good thing to relate to. What do you want to do? Oh, in terms of like uh, 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 the content you're saying, like like have this reflect what you want to be doing? Because yeah, I'll look at your projects here and. You have those three things. So just from memory here, you had the the Mass Effect redesign. You had the you had the Sea of Thieves stuff, and you had the Unreal stuff, right? Um, but all these things are here. So I'm curious, like it, perhaps this isn't really indicative of where you want to be working. I mean, Ninja Theory, right? They wouldn't make this game. So maybe that's a good call that your your chat was. For your chat, I looked at chat and said chat that your uh, your content was uh, 
was kind of more focused to AAA space. Excuse me. Um, Gnome, is having an opening at all necessary? Heck yeah, it is. Heck yeah. Bookends are super good. Super good. Have things at the front and back. I have like two seconds of here's me, here's my contact stuff. Just make it very clear. Uh, I went to home. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, Matt. I didn't even realize that. Um, yeah, just make it painfully obvious who you are and what this thing is. It's just a very, very good idea. Because the thing is, if you have no information there, you don't know who's watching this video or where they're watching it from, you know? So just having it there and making it painfully obvious how to get in touch is going to be a good call no matter what. Is If it's there two seconds, like, this is good. Here's me carrying on. And it's like a little space of, of nothing happening visually, but it's, it's just a white canvas opportunity to say, like, here's what I do with, with sound when I have nothing to edit, edit to or design to. It's cool. Um, this is even a bit too long, but like it's fine. Um, okay, let's go through our, our criteria, yeah? So Gnome and anybody new, these are the criteria we're looking at. Uh, what's up, Diego de la Roca? Rocha? Rocha? Um, here's our criteria. Presentation, material selection, content quality, and distinctions. So this is what we're looking at. We, we kind of looked at it just freestyle for a long time. We being Matt, Matt Task in the chat myself. Um, we kind of looked at it freestyle, the various reels freestyle for a while, and then kind of decided that we had to, 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 in an effort to keep things on the rails and actually address kind of all the, or what we deem to be a lot of the important points, we made these kind of four umbrella categories. And presentation is talking about the site as a whole and the reel and uh, things like titling and information and just taste and aesthetic and, and flow and navigation and, and like the narrative of landing on a page just how you present yourself on the internet to people who might not might not know you very well, right? And material selection is talking about what's in your website, like the projects page, and what's in your reel itself, and what that says about your, your current skill sets and your past work history and your future aspirations. The content quality point is talking about whether or not your stuff is good, just at the industry standard of awesome. And if it's not quite there, or if it's not there in some capacities, we'll try to point you in that direction and certainly tell you what you're, what you're doing well. For distinction, it's merely are you standing out? Because there's a whole lot of folks that want the same jobs you want. And if you aren't standing out in some respect, that doesn't even need to be sound. It could be like a cool website or just uh, interesting kind of approach to your reel or uh, like cool photos or whatever. Like there's a lot of people who I can kind of think of right now that I recall for, for various reasons, you know? So, and yeah, they're not, they're not all just like sounded cool, you know? So uh, let's go ahead and talk about presentation a bit. So we talked about the uh, the home goes nowhere. That's kind of weird. The blog is like slightly old, but not that old. And April before that is a kind of a while. And then before that, February, it's like not terrible. It's definitely better than some blogs we've seen, but like 14th is the first one. And then 17th, like so three blog posts in a year is like not that many. So ugh, blogs are, are, are scary. They're, they're very scary to, to start because they need your, your, uh, your commitment. And like, heck, we don't even, we, we tried doing like a, a, a power play thing where we post these little dev commentary dealios, but it takes time. It's hard to find time for that stuff. And it's just, it's very easy to be like, this project needs doing. Of course, I'll put my time to this thing we had to ship next week or next month or even in six months, rather than doing this like blog thing that has no tangible outcome apart from being like kind of cool and like kind of out outreachy and stuff, but it's outreach is sweet, but it's like, it's tough to find time for it unless it's scheduled. So if you schedule time for it, then freaking do it. Yeah. Uh, okay. And into projects. Yeah. This is a bit, to, a bit much to look at. It's like, it's not terrible, but I mean, I don't know the, the scrolling thing, like our site, for example, is, uh, if I go like .com, um, our site is a bunch of scrolling stuff too, but it's kind of like, it, this is built to make you not look at all of it, kind of. Does that make sense? Like, I don't care if you look at Action Hank or look at Desk Gambit or look at Wanderlust Adventures. Like, it's not really important to us. The The gist is that you scroll through like, oh, I know Shadow Hand or I know Train Catcher World or Necrodancer or whatever, right? And hopefully you just have a, a, a general idea of some of the things we've worked on and then carry on from the page. Like, if, if that's all we got through to you, then that's, we were successful, you know? So as far as this goes... These are kind of a little bit uh, 
like some are clear as, as far as what they are, but like this one is not guaranteed that people know what this is from an image, like an image alone. And like maybe this one too, there's a few that, that people might not know right away what they are, you know? So it might be worthwhile just from a skimming standpoint to have a very clear idea of like what this is, what this is, what this is right away. Because you can't be guaranteed people like do this through everyone to see what it is. And it might not even be important for them to know the, the specific information about all of them, but just allow skimming to be a possible kind of route through navigating your content, you know? Gnome asks, what's better, one long reel or multiple 10 to 30 second clips? It's a very common question. Um, you feel like having multiple clips is better. You're wrong, in my very strong opinion. But uh, different genres that throwing someone off, e.g. in the midst of an epic clip, cut to cute clip. Well, yes, but the thing is, one... So everyone's going to answer in the chat for you. I'll say on stream as well, for those who aren't in the chat. Uh, one reel as a comprehensive encapsulation of everything you have to offer is a very, very good choice because you have no idea how long people have to look at your stuff. And if you just have a bunch of stuff, just like a bunch of potpourri, you have no control over what that person looks at. And if your best thing is like the third one down, or if your best thing is like the second one down or fifth one down, then, or perhaps the thing that's not even best, but the thing that's most relevant to their interests or what they want to be hiring you for, if that's there, then you have no control over whether they see that or not. Whereas if they, if they watch a one minute video, and one minute's like reasonable. I, if I see a one minute reel, I'm like happily I'll watch that. And unless, unless it's like trash and like obviously there's not a good fit for what we're, what we're looking for, like in the first 10 seconds, then I'll watch it. I don't mind watching a minute of content, you know? And in that minute, I if it's if it's a accurate, if it's an accurate encapsulation of what you have to offer, then they will for sure see if you're a good fit for their project in that minute. And an epic thing and a cutesy thing is not impossible to do. It's certainly possible to do. And it's certainly, I mean, the thing is, flow is a big part of your job as a sound designer or composer. And if you struggle with making something flow well, then yeah, that's a problem. But it's not impossible. I mean, there's tons of examples of, of huge changes in tone from moment to moment that worked super well. Heck, I was watching Star Wars, and there's a great moment, um, without spoiling too much, that is extremely pivotal, and it's a huge action moment, but it's silent. And it's like really, really cool. And yeah, it's jarring, but it's effective. And in terms of flow, it's pretty cool. So I think that going epic to cutesy is totally possible. And unless you're just doing a, like, a poor job of it, uh, I think it still works. It's a better choice than having multiple reels. We, we often talk, talk about the, uh, the narrative of landing on a page. And if we land on, like, on this page, for example, um, there is no question in my mind what Jamie wants me to do right now. You know? Like, this is very, very clear. And if I watch this thing through and I'm like, huh, I want to know more about the Andromeda thing, then we'll see. If I go here, then I can go to this in the full version of it, right? As opposed to just the, the clip. Um, assuming that's actually not, not the same thing. It, if it is, then that's kind of silly. But if it's like, uh, I mean, what I, what I like even more than this would be something, unless, unless it was here, is it here? Not really. So ideally, what I like seeing is something like a, a short blurb on what this thing is and what you did or why you picked it or something like that. It's pretty effective. Just a bit more information. Because the thing is, if people want more information, they will seek it out. It's like how you watch a music reel and, or listen to a music reel and you like that third track, they're going to go and find it. Like It's, it's going to happen. So if you just put all your tracks there and like hope for the best, it's not going to be very effective. Or at least not as effective, in my in my very strong opinion. Um, carrying on. So into the, the whole material selection thing, this is more broad, and which is kind of cool because it shows this like broad background of interest and and things you've taken time to do yourself with these redesigns. And the demo reel makes it pretty clear that you want some kind of AAA position. So yeah, not bad. Uh, let's talk about the content quality, yeah, in a little more detail. Let's press play again. I'm gonna turn my side chain on too. Boom. So too bad, big hit. You're quiet now. Okay, yeah. So so the big 
all that aside, um, one thing I noticed in here is that in the cinematic shots, at least the well, kind of across the whole thing, the 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 panorama is kind of loose, like it's it's not really clear. Oh, titles. Sorry, before I get back to panorama, yes, Matt. Sorry, we began talking about titles and just totally didn't. So this should stay up the entire time, man. This is a super tasteful title. Looks really good. Has all the info we need. And uh, linear audio. There you go. And then here is the next one, which I'll have to find and seek out, which is why you should have it up the whole time. Uh, this, <laughs> where is it? Well, I'm, not, I'm demonstrating why you should have title, titles up the whole time. So I'm trying to find out what this thing was, and I can't find the title. Um, sea of Thieves gameplay linear audio redesign. Okay, not implemented. So cool you have linear. Cool it's redesign. Got it. It might be courteous to be like to say who this is by, you know, put the developer in there. It's sort of a just just a courteous thing to do. Um, if this is redesign, we know you didn't work on it, but regardless, it's still nice to have. And then sound design and implementation with Unreal Engine 4 and Wise. Yeah, great. Have these titles up the entire time. Titles look good in a good spot. Just keep them up, okay? And the ending ending titles look fine too. Same thing as the front. Looks awesome. So back to panorama. If I'm gonna nitpick, which I am, then let's talk about this uh, this landing. You know, all, all the all the just sort of um, roller coastery cinematic stuff aside. Okay, so press play. So this moment right here. Okay, so that that hit. I mean, everything is kind of. It's. I, I feel like this opening is not sure whether it wants to be. Um, like designing what we see or designing like what's actually happening or designing just sort of some cool sounds against some visual content, you know? So this hit, we have the, and we have the, the rock debris and stuff, but like, like the rock debris is like super wide. It's all around. So that's kind of staying true to the cinematic thing, but it's also happening right in front of us. So it's kind of like, I, I don't know it just seems kind of loose as far as what it really wants to be doing. I don't know. It, it might be a personal thing. Again, all this is heavily under the caveat of dude got hired. <laughs> so, um, all right. Um, boss of bass says, how do I get my foot in the door to work in a studio? Yeah, okay, well, let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> Matt says, that's a big question. Yeah, it is. Uh, or big topic. You get a body of work that makes a studio want you. That might be redesigns, game jams, ships, mini games, anything to prove you got the skills and interest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true. What's a good practice technique? Well, kind of what we just said. So redesign everything you want to be working on. You should practice designing things that resemble the things you want to be doing professionally. So if you want to work on, on uh, something like AAA content, then redesign AAA content or do things like this third clip where he has Unreal Engine 4 running and why is running and does these things. I mean, really, just, yeah, deep listening to your favorite, deep listening to your favorite games. Yes, Andrew's got that, got that too. Um, there's a whole lot, whole lot of things you can do. I mean, I, a long time ago, I, uh, I really liked how, I wonder if I can find this fast. I might be able to. I really liked how the Portal 2 Atlas and Peabody, the two robots in the co-op mode, I loved how they sounded, yeah. And if I can find this, we'll see. Uh, I totally can. Check this out. So here's like the egg bots. <laughs> they're called egg bots. Original. Right, like the uh oh. It's one of the assets like from the from the game files. And I want to reproduce it with like a thank you. And here's me. Right, that was like 2011, a long time ago. So just me taking a sound in a game and being like, I wonder if I can do that. And then you just tear it apart and see if you can do the same thing. I mean, that's going to help you just learn. Because if you fail, that's still learning. Failure is very helpful. Go watch Star Wars. Uh, okay. So back to this thing. Let's talk about, uh, about the panorama stuff some more. So... <laughs> It's like, I don't know, are, are we hearing this guy? Or are we hearing just some stuff? And then same thing there, there's like a big ka -chunk thing. Is it when this thing changes? Like... 
right there. Because I'm hearing it like left and right. <laughs> like it's all around me. This it's like really hard to tell what what you're going for. And there, like there's no foley at all. Like we're not hearing him run in the slightest. So again, that's just kind of assume that you want. Like that was an active choice. There's like no foley. And then we hear this though. So now we are hearing this guy. It's just, it's kind of, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, Jamie. I don't know what you want me to, want me to think of this thing. So we're going to carry on. <laughs> and someone mentioned as well that it kind of blurs the line between sound effects and music. And I agree. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's. Not a huge issue for me personally that it does that, but eh, carry on. Yeah, again, that hit is kind of all around me. I think it's the reverb, though. I'm not sure. This whole scene has a lot of reverb and doesn't really sound to me like an outdoor kind of verb. It's a bit cavey, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's like not the word. I think it's just too loud. <laughs> it's just a very boomy and like kind of uh, 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 vast. <clears throat> um, no. What if you shipped a bunch of indie slash casual stuff that are not attractive or juicy to put on a reel for a AAA studio to look at? Uh, well, still put it on there, yo. I mean, it's a very... It's got to be, like, pretty bad to not want to include it, honestly. Because shipping anything at all is great. It just shows you're involved. It shows you out of initiative. That you put some work in so far in your career. And... Because that's the thing. There's a whole lot of people who are, like, kind of doing the work, but not really, you know? So, showing you that you're not part of that crew and you're actually interested and passionate, then that's great. And if you... I mean, I've had people who are like, eh... They want to do that. I'm like, well, I question your, I question your passion. <laughs> I guess is what it comes down to. But anyways, um, let's see here. So Matt's saying sure shift work. Heck yeah. And then custom for the studio. Heck yeah. Depends on the job you want. Um, so if I was buying a clay, you better be sure it has some invisible ink and don't starve my reel. Ooh. Yeah. Sure. We had a uh, we had Rob Kreckel from. Naughty Dog on here as a guest host a while back and he was saying like heck yeah I'll redesign Uncharted if he, if he can make his game sound better than he did he's gonna hire you <laughs> that's what it comes down to I would too heck like Joey at Power Up does design that I feel like I have to keep, I have to keep up with it all the time he's super good Yeah, again, the pan the panorama is so just wide all the time. I don't feel like I don't feel like there was a lot of uh, kind of active, th deliberate thought and intention put into the panorama, and that's what stands out the most to me the whole time. Like that goes that that goes for reverb, that goes for like positioning of source like sources of audio in the scene. Um, same thing goes here. Actually, there was some stuff that was super wide that I felt were kind of weird being wide. I like your, your your health pick was sweet though. I like that a lot. Like that, the, the, even like the reloads, like it's really wide. <laughs> this feels necessary, you know. But that's awesome. Cool gun. Um, I have one note, but he got hired. Yes, exactly. Um, I have one note here. So that sound, 
right? That sound that... Right? That, and also... That sound? Those are really similar, and just from a... From a game design perspective, like designing sound with game design in mind, and things like informing player what's, players what's happening with sound, and supporting and complementing what's happening with sound, those two things sounding so similar is a bit of a trick because what happens if someone like recharges or like reloads, but like it, like while running over a health pack or like jumping near one and they miss it, but they don't realize like the game, the sounds are so similar. Um, it's pretty important that, I mean, especially for a first person shooter like this or for something like this, I mean, this is a very, it's a demo obviously, right? But for a game in this vein, it's really important that sounds are are informing players and helping inform their behavior. You know, uh, I don't, I read a, I read an article a long time ago about like way before I was even into game sound design. I was doing like level design for Unreal Engine, like Unreal Engine two, <laughs> with uh, not even two. I think it was the first one, even like one point four or something, for Unreal Tournament. And I was reading uh, Cliffy B's ownage. Anyone know about that? <laughs> Cliffy B had a whole, uh, whole like web community called Ownage. It might still be around. I have no idea. But it was, it was like a, a forum of sorts, and you could submit your map design, and then uh, Cliffy B would like look at all the maps and stuff, and then like pick out like a winner because he was he did level design for uh, for UT right Unreal Tournament back in the day, and. So you pick one, it would like win ownage for that month or something like that. And he would do a little article on like why it's so good. And it would be included, like it would be like an ownage package that would go as like a mod you could download as a patch. And uh, yeah, it was just like super cool. So, but I recall one thing he brought up with that in like art articles talking about what makes good level design. And one of those was, oh, what the heck level was it? It was, it's in Unreal Tournament and I can picture it, but I have no, conveyor maybe? But there was one spot where you would like, there, there was like a vent in the wall and it was on the third floor or second floor and you'd walk into this vent like from the side and then it would go like, you know, maybe 12 feet kind of thing into the wall and then you'd drop in the floor and land in another room. And in this vent was the body armor. And that was a very specific deliberate choice in terms of sound design because pickups in Unreal Tournament are audible by other players. So if you pick up body armor, I can hear it, right? So if you're in that room, you might hear the body armor being picked up and it would, it would like cue you. It would inform the player's behavior to like do this and like look up at the thing falling, falling out of the sky. So with this kind of thing, it's really super, super important to make sure that these sounds are extremely informative and that we know exactly what this health is. We, we know we picked up health, right? Because you could be like backing up while shooting something and you're low on health and you're hoping you hit this health thing that is behind you. You don't even, don't even know if it's currently spawned or not. You're kind of just like, it's like a dying, desperate hope, right? So, yeah, no, th th that was my one kind of just creative point for this section. But otherwise, it sounds pretty cool. And it's implemented. Good stuff, man. So, um, as far as distinction, yeah, I think you're sending out. I think so. I think that this is a pretty tailored um, reel as far as being clear what you want to do. Uh, I think it's a bit heavy-handed. In a few a few ways, like with the roller coastery cinematic design stuff, and um, being kind of unclear on what it is, like whether it's going to be kind of stylized or whether you're designing what we're looking at. And I think the reverb is a bit of an issue too. But like overall, it's super solid, man. And you got hired, so <laughs> claps to you, Matt. If you have thoughts on distinction, I'm I'm happy to read them out, man. Um. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, let's go ahead into the second reel, which is not as much to look at. It's only a video. So, energized. Let's close this off. And 137, we have this page. We have no info. Oof. How do I contact you, my friend? Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Three, two, one, and...
pause here for a second. Um, I'm I'm currently lost. I don't mean I don't know what I'm looking at. I mean I'm I mean my attention is now not on your reel. And that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Thanks, Kevin. Really informative. That's unfortunate that I'm I'm currently not watching your reel. I totally got sidetracked and I went, I was like just staring ahead and I wasn't watching anymore. So I'm gonna keep watching it. We'll, we'll press play again. We're gonna come back and talk about this though, okay? Okay, this is a, a wonderful, wonderful example of someone being probably way better than the real is conveying. Um, <laughs> which is, oh, let's also talk about this, Matt, for a second before we dive into this one. Um, Matt and I, I believe we may have mentioned last year at some point, but we are, we are doing a real talk talk at GDC for the audio boot camp this year. And... I'm super pumped. We're planning on having a lot of uh, kind of custom-made content that resembles the various kind of common problems that we've seen and the, ver the, the relatively easy improvements that can be made as well. And this all stems from one kind of root, very common issue. And the issue is, is that people are better than their reels convey. Like, they're just better than their sites and their content are communicating. And I think this is a very good example of that. Because, so from, what does someone say in the chat? I saw it. Holy crap, this guy has a lot. Yeah, shifters. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, there's so much here. It's so crazy. Um, M Audible, what's up? You know Juan? You know Juan? Because I want to know Juan also. Because I want to, are they here right now? I don't think you're here, but uh, I think that this is going to be a, a long conversation. I'm, I'm glad we have like a full 35 minutes for this. This is, this is what we're talking about. So you're in the same VFS class. Is he in town or is he back in Columbia? Because, yeah, Columbia. It's crazy. It's a ways off. He was at Global Game Jam Vancouver. Oh, killer. Okay. Well, this is wonderful. I hope I meet him one day. So... Here is the thing. This opens up, and we've got your name, Game Audio Demo Reel, sure. And then we have, oh, Quiet Gecko's here, what's up? Good, I'm glad you're here. Okay, so let's let's have a chat, because I think, um, yeah, when do you get here? Because we just finished watching it, and I will just reiterate that about 40 seconds in, I stopped the video, and said that I was no longer really watching it. I was kind of just staring ahead, and I wasn't I wasn't really drawn in or gripped. So you're you're here today, okay? Cool. So let's talk about that. So first off, big problem is that you have no contact info here or here, and that's just I I really encourage you to make it as easy as possible to get in touch because if someone likes your reel. They shouldn't need to be, like, searching for your email and stuff, you know? This can't hurt. It is, there is some contact stuff at the end, which is very good. But, again, just make it very, very easy to get in touch. I'd, I'd far prefer to, like, select some text and control C than I would to type it in manually. Just, like, a, a small thing, right? But just, it, it can't possibly hurt to just have your information very, very apparent. 
Okay, and now about just about presentation in general. Uh all right. This is a minute and 37. There is so much stuff jammed into this minute and 37 seconds, man. So much stuff. And do you have a website also, or just this one reel? Because I think a lot of the problems we're seeing could be solved relatively easily by just having that information that you're trying to shove into this reel just having it somewhere else. Because it's, it's probably good information, it's probably worth looking at, and it's pretty cool in some cases, very likely. But it's just too much information for a reel, it's way too much. This should be like a teaser trailer, you know? Just a quick glance at what you have to offer, and the whole goal of this thing is to get your hooks in, get people interested and excited, so much that they want to look at your site and or look at your additional content and learn more about you, to look at your bio and learn more about you personally, to look at your resume and your cover letter and all these things, because your demo reel is like the very first thing. It's ground zero, right? So I'll press play here. My very first thought was like, wow, we're done already? Like this StarCraft? And we're done. So 10 seconds, it's like, and not even, because we have this, well, I guess 10 seconds, yeah. So 10 seconds, and it's done. It's done. And this stuff, oh, it's like a lot, to, it's a lot of text. It's a whole lot. This is necessary, StarCraft, although, give me a second. I'm pretty sure StarCraft is one word. It is, StarCraft is one word. And getting game titles correct is probably worth <laughs> worth doing. Excuse me. So all this text is a bit rough. The yellow text is a bit hard to read sometimes, just in terms of how you're presenting text in general. I think this is oh, and it's StarCraft two. Berserker says, yeah, okay, fair enough. I'm not. I don't know Star StarCraft very well, so there you have it. It's uh well, if <laughs> if you're applying to, to Blizzard. With this, and it says StarCraft not two, then that's probably gonna probably gonna hurt you. Um, yeah, and and Matt says getting the game name right is not nitpicky. I I agree hundred percent. It's game audio, so text should be. In fact, let's just bring up uh, Jamie's reel again. This is great text. It's really good. Apart from the titles going away, if they stayed up, it'd be perfect. So, well, near perfect. Here's the. Here's the text, right? It's super tasteful. The the real, or sorry, the, the progress bar and stuff isn't covering it up. The only thing I said he could probably add in is just like, out of courtesy, the developer of the of the projects he's redesigning. Um, but otherwise, like just, just aesthetically, this is really good. Just this kind of um, like black outline or black, uh, like semi-transparent kind of thing. This is like having no background, it makes it such that if you have a white or a, a, a bright colored, um, or like high, high saturation, I guess, kind of uh, hue behind this, it makes it hard to read. And this makes it so it's guaranteed, regardless of what's behind it, right? Just helps it. And on top of that, there's so much text, yo. And like, it's kind of like created, like it's capital C for no reason, and it's, it's just so much text. I didn't want to read it at all. It's just so much. And it has these slow crossfades too. And the slow crossfades are like, like right here, for example. What a mess. You know, it's just something like, just snappy crossfade is nice. If you need to have text, <laughs> you know, the snappy crossfade, here you go. <clears throat> but like this, it's just way too much. Ideally you'd have like a very, very basic um, here's a prototype thing I made, here's a game jam thing I made, and if people want to know about, and just put there something like, uh, wise integration, or something like random music system, let's have this only, if you want to have in something, you, something pretty, pretty, pretty cool you did with it, you know, like why it's in your, in your reel, you know? And if you have random music system there, that's kind of interesting, and if it sounds cool, I will absolutely go look at the video 
that you've also included like included on, on your website that has more information about this thing you did. And ideally, I want you talking in it and not just reading the whole time because ideally, I want to be kind of taken on a small journey, if that makes sense. I know it's like a an informational kind of, maybe even educational little expose into this thing you made, but your job as a sound designer and composer one day will be to uh, dictate and support, well support and at times dictate, the flow of a piece. So if you have this thing where you've got, uh, in fact, let me try and find this if I can. Um, I know this came up before already, but we, uh, oh, what the heck? Um, is this gonna be it? Give me a second here. Uh, yeah, so here's like a great example. Of course, right? Take a shot. So here's Damien Shepard. This F mod event makes use of a de Right away, flow is there. We have like blooping and his voice is right there to crossfade into the content. This F mod event makes use of a danger parameter. So immediately he's showing us that he is mixing his own thing. <laughs> it's like he's taken this piece that he's made and this is only his, right? It's custom. And he's mixing it himself. So it has his voice which sounds good. Amateur, which tells FMOD how threatening the current situation is. So right? So there's a lot of information being, apart from implementation, by the way. Have you, have you not fixed that yet, man? Implementation. Um, <laughs> where's, where's Damien? Implementation. Not okay. Classic. Classic typo. Uh, but the point is, he's like, he's doing a lot more to communicate his skills Apart, like on top of just the content in the video, you know, whereas this thing is just really, really not supportive of what you're trying to do. It's distracting. I'm not looking at what the content is. I'm reading the text instead. I'm missing the action. I'm missing the other text at top. Like it's it's really problematic, you know. So I would encourage you to make this text as limited as possible. Okay, limited. Big time. And like this thing, Little Hoods, I didn't even see Little Hoods before. I saw a PC game and this stuff. I didn't even see this text the first time through. Also, this has no drop shadow. And the next one does. You know, just, just small details, yo. And details stand out, big time. I mean, it's just, it's the kind of thing where if all the details are there, then you're just guaranteed that people are looking at what's important and they're not nitpicking like the typos and the absence of a drop shadow <laughs> and like this weird stuff like that, right? There's, there's a lot of detail work on on sites, like links that don't go anywhere or um, like misaligned content or just stuff like that that should be fixed and it has nothing to do with audio, but just it does speak to to you as an individual. And if people see things like this, where it's like, you know, this is a, there's, there's like a lack of attention to detail here, or perhaps like a deficiency at least, then they might wonder, wonder like how far that, that goes, like how deep that, how deep that goes into who you are. Man, yeah, just leaves, leaves things open to assumption and interpretation, you know? What's up DVS? Good to see you. Been a while. Uh, let's keep going. Also, this thing, I didn't really understand at all what was happening. Like, Little Hoods, PC game, music composer, music impl implementation, sure. And you're using wise, that's cool. But, like, I didn't really know what... Like, this didn't, didn't communicate anything to me. I, uh, I'll, pl I'll play it again, I'll see if I can figure it out, but just... I mean, maybe I'm just missing something obvious, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I mean, I have no idea what that did. It's it's kind of like it. We don't see enough of it to to indicate what this is actually doing. I appreciate that it's it is effectively or it is apparently controlling orchestration using this RTPC. I appreciate that, but I don't have any idea what it has heard because 
because it's such a limited um, chop I was listening to, there's not enough information or time to show what this is even doing. So it's it's not great. And yeah, so so Gecko, it's definitely better to to be speaking these kind of things and talk about what's specifically happening. These kind of things are very it is, it's very challenging to show this kind of thing in a reel because it's like you need to have time to explain it. And if you want a good reel, it needs to be kind of quick and punchy and get the, all the points across in very little time. So ideally having like a reel for sound and a reel for music and then additional content of you talking. Like, so for example, like Little Hoods, you have a video on Little Hoods specifically that's like a minute long or five minutes long or however long it needs to be. As long as it is, it holds my attention and has good flow and is nice to listen to, I'm going to listen to it. Totally. That, that site I just showed you, um, we watched this video on stream. It's like five minutes long. How long is this thing? It's, oh, it's not even five minutes. It's just one minute long. But we have watched like five minute, even like eight minute implementation videos. They're just like, they're just interesting. <laughs> so you want to watch it. But this is not interesting to have the text here. It's just, it's very risky. You might grab some people, but it's, it's definitely less effective. All right. Carrying on. Okay, so, <laughs> um, wow, again, say, just say World of Warcraft, man, and the burning, you know, space here, just these typos are, are hurting you. Burning Crusade, uh, redesign, yep, again, might, might, might want to put uh, Blizzard there, we all know it's Blizzard, but put Blizzard as a, as a courtesy to the developer whose content you're redesigning. We'll, uh, we'll talk about Blizzard in general in a second here, but... Just put Blizzard here if you, want, if you insist on, on doing Blizzard. So sound designer, music editor, music composer, Foley artist and editor, VO talent, casting, recording, edit, 5.1 mix. Wowza. Uh, if you say sound redesign and music rescore, that's going to be enough. <laughs> In my opinion. If it's got voice, I'll assume that you did the voice. If you didn't, then you're being disingenuous on the on the, the whole, like, I did sound design, or sound redesign, you know? But again, I mean, all this info is maybe worth putting in, in, like, your additional content, you know, have this video separate, and then have all these things in here. If you, if you did this at, like, VFS or something, then have that in there. You know, say, I did this thing, I, I, would, I did VO talent casting and recording, or whatever, I put, put it all there, it's fine. And is this Vimeo 5.1? I don't know that it is. Vimeo Atmos. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is kind of meaningless right now because I'm on headphones. But. So again, this is nightmarish to read against this light background. Audio rep, reptiland, reptiland. I get it, reptile. Audio game in wise. Audio lead, music composer, sound designer, implementation. Um, sure, okay, but this is just brutal to look at. Uh, let's have a <laughs> Jesus lizard, whale wizard, <laughs> griffin. Um, here we go. Different start position. Oh my god, I gotta pause this. Random music generated from samples, different start positions, and combinations to get the most out of little music content, and a different experience every gameplay. I mean, if you assume that people looking at this thing know why you would do random anything in games, that's that's you just, just like this is a definition of why anyone does anything random in any game. Like the whole point is to make it less repetitive, right? And a new experience each time, but. If you do want to talk about like the kind of goals you, the things you want them to hear, like how how that randomness might present itself, that's more interesting to me than than it'll be different each time. Like of course it'll be different each, each time if it's random. That's the point. So talk about like what they might hear, and again talk about this. You know, say the say what the different random parts are, and what defines the randomness, and what defines like how it how the playhead progresses through the randomness and like what plays what doesn't 
if there's certain factors in game that define what play or what something plays and why something else doesn't play. Like it's it's just needs this needs more information than what you're what you have and needs different information too. Whoa. <laughs> and then just flow wise, there's some weird stuff too here and there. Um we'll go back to that though in a second. Matt, if you don't talk about flow, remind me remind me to talk about flow, okay? Randomized combinations with attack and vocalization. Chimera goat slash electric attack, okay? Oh, it's gone. Jesus flies by. Unity, space shooter. I created to understand better the game engine, practice coding, and also implement audio through Unity, not to be limited by middleware. So you're coding too. This is great. Ugh. There's just so much to look at. See, this is the challenge of having this kind of thing. It's like, it's just that there's so many things to look at right now. It's like the content, I mean, there's like this thing, and then if I'm reading this halfway through and this changes, I'm like, whoa, and I have to look at this thing again. I, I lost my spot in the text. It's just, oh man, it's just, he, this is your job, is, is to help guide attention. Like anything in audio you do, we're trying to guide our listeners' attention. And that goes for mixing music and mixing film and mixing games, everything. You're trying to like decide what the most important thing to the listener or viewer in this case is and then guide their attention to that thing, right? So, I mean, was it, I don't, I don't recall if it was, if it was, uh, maybe it was Rob or something. I think it was Rob, that, that Battlefield redesign. Oh, who was that? I should, I should know. Jacob? Jacob something? Jacob Harley? I think it was Jacob Harley. And it was like just ambience like crazy through the whole thing. And the point is like you're not, this isn't important right now. It's important to establish, but then once the tank rolls by, like that's the important thing. It's, it's, it's the whole it's the whole freaking frame. It's like let's hear the tank out front. So in this case, we have like everything is loud. If you If you think of these various things to look at as audio, everything is loud all at once. And we're not sure what to listen to, right? So, you're saying that making it a minute and a half is tough. I agree, but so so yeah. If it can't, if you can't make something fit into the one and a half minute demo, uh, should it be in there? It should probably be in a different video to watch later or something. By the way, DVS three one three one in the chat is um, Robbie at uh, at three four three Industries. Um, so you can listen to him. <laughs> he knows what's, he knows what's up. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and keep, keep going. Neon brains, yo. Okay, and now, again, the Burning Crusade. More of this. So, I guess it's like... This was some earlier, or, yeah, here, and then it was more later on? Is this, is this the same trailer? I think so. You're showing more of it? I guess trying to like split up your content or something? Um, whenever I see that, I almost always don't like it. It's kind of just, it just makes me feel I don't know, it, it makes it feel like filler or something. Like, oh, I guess I'll do more of this now. You know? I don't know. So, this could, for sure, if you, if you want to include this, have it together with your Blizzard stuff. I mean, let's, let's mention that for a second here. So, we fully, and by we, I mean myself and Matt, we fully discourage including Blizzard redesigns in your content just as we discourage putting like award-winning redesigns or, or redesigns of award-winning content in your reels. Because people generally have a pretty good idea of what the originals sound like because they're so well known. And Blizzard like sets the standard for the industry in, in many ways. They're definitely up there. And they, they kind of uh, are who a lot of the industry look to for, for like where that bar is, you know? And 
the fact is, if you're coming out of VFS, you're not going to be there. You're not going to be at that bar. And that's not to say you shouldn't try. Of course, you should like push yourself and be ambitious and stuff and be and uh, and and refine your craft and keep challenging yourself. That's very important and and admirable and worthwhile. But it's probably worth doing things that people are less familiar with. Like I saw a, uh, a snake pass redesign. Super cool. I know a snake pass sounds good, but I can't think of like in my head like what the game sounds like specifically right now. So if you do a cool like trailer redesign or an in-game redesign, that's going to stand out more because people will not go in with like preconceived notions of what that should sound like. They'll just go in with a blank slate and view your content, listen to it, and adjudicate your content without any other kind of bias already affecting it before you even start it. Right, you're kind of it's a, it's a bit of a, a bold move to design things like this, or to like rescore Journey, or to redesign Limbo, or to like there's, there's a lot of kind of heavy hitters that that I see, and I'm like, okay, let's have a listen, let's see how you did. <laughs> but it's like every time it's worse, you know. It, it's I, I I don't think I've seen a Blizzard redesign once where I was like, that was sweet, like that was that was as good as the original, if not better. I can think of maybe one. Oh, like one Bastion uh, short redesign that I was like impressed. But again, it wasn't as good. It was pretty, it was like definitely better than most I've seen, but it's it's bold. So let's talk about flow for a second now. Uh, we began talking about, or did, did touch upon the whole thing, how it's your job to guide people's attention and say, listen to this. This is the most important thing. Now listen to this. This is now the most important thing. Now listen to this, right? That's your goal. And that... <sighs> A big part of that, like what supports that that goal of like guiding attention, is your knowledge and aptitude and sensibilities when it comes to flow. And if you're doing things like J cuts, and a J cut is when the audio comes in before the visual does, um, that can be really effective. It can be super cool to kind of give a bit of a a uh, some some like pre life and some forethought, like some warning. Some foreshadowing, rather, not forethought. Some foreshadowing into what's what's coming next. But with this thing, there's a lot of moments where I was like, "What am I hearing right now?" <laughs> it's and it comes in so early, and it's like completely out of context because we're currently looking at you know Starcraft or the Swarm, and then we hear the next clip, and it's like, "What the heck is that?" And that happened a couple times in this reel. It happened once, namely at the end of this, I think. The and I was like, "Is that the sound of this girl or something?" Is it here? <laughs> yeah, that. I was like, what is this sound? It was so out of... Like, it didn't fit this palette at all. And I was like, what the heck is this? Right? Caught me off, off guard. And, like, was that part... Maybe it was part of it. If it was, I'm like, then I'm even more confused. And this also! So we're hearing this music that's like... Da, ba, da, ba, da, and then this screech without any idea what we're listening to yet. It's like, it's we're hearing it during the crossfade. And it's, it just, it was very jarring. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a goal of yours. I would encourage you to, to watch your content with other people around. Or to, like, for example, I, I might ask like, um, Here's an example. Like my, my girlfriend's a lawyer, right? She's not in game audio. She's not even in games. But I'll ask her to like come and watch some stuff. And it's really helpful because though she might not be able to like offer like detailed uh, tips like how to improve this like panorama in this moment or like my reverb tales or like something specific like that technically, she's looking at it from the from the perspective of just any random kind of listener. And what that can do. There's like a psychological kind of psychological kind of impact where or a moment where I, as the creator, kind of get more just cringy at moments that I know I can improve. And by watching her, if I like did a trailer, for example, and I'm watching her and like not the trailer, and I can see she loses attention in a moment, or she's like kind of confused or or just didn't get a point didn't didn't like get something at some point, then that's really informative too. So just bringing people in to look at your stuff and just seeing how they react to it 
and putting yourself in their shoes, like in the shoes of somebody who's never seen it before, right? Because you watching this, you know exactly what the screech is, right? Like you watching this, and like you made that sound, you know what that's from, right? But we don't. So just in terms of flow, that's really confusing. And ideally you want people to know exactly what they're looking at from moment to moment, because that is your job once you're in studio, right? Like once you're working with a, with a team is to be very clear on, on what you're doing all the time. So uh, this next bit here, oh, I guess we can talk about like, well, let's talk about the Blizzard stuff, sure. So. Okay, here's a nice little point that we can talk about. This thing, we didn't hear the movement. And all the like articulation and stuff are pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um but uh well, there's a lot of a lot of problems with this, but we'll we'll focus in on this one little thing you can improve right now. So from from this moment it goes like whoosh, right? Like whoosh. There's a little whoosh down. So that could sound like something that is just falling. Like maybe like a, like a, a a latch came came out, it's like falls down, or it's like servos forcing it down, or just gravity is like lets it fall down. Whatever, like whatever you choose, this is. We got to hear it, but right now that movement's silent, right? So so right now that's a great way to kind of build or like build your world out more, and just see like what's actually happening in that moment. And furthermore, it's a great way to give some energy to the impacts that follow. Like, is generally less effective and kind of like less mature design than like, or like, or something before it to kind of help staircase up into that moment. Let's talk about panorama and perspective. Right there, we our camera moved big time. But if we close our eyes, our perspective didn't, like our sonic perspective, right? We're just, we're looking at this thing right in front of us and it's not really uh, um, accurate. It isn't, doesn't reflect the change in perspective. Like, like more bass is heard nearer to things, for example, right? Like we'd certainly hear more detail in what's happening here compared to being way the heck over here. Sclathil, shouldn't the release valve sound like the kshhh happen at the start of the fall? I don't know. Questionable? Debatable? The air is visibly coming out right here, right? Psst, all this like little steam stuff, I don't know, hydraulics? I don't know how things work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so perspective is super important. So on this, on this moment, boom, now it's like way louder, way in our face. We're hearing that thing specifically and not the whole, the whole like entity, right? We're hearing this part of it. Super important. Cool. Let's get let's go over to the uh the Burning Crusade stuff. Um hereish. So again, generally, in terms of perspective, things are kind of happening like here, just like right, right in the middle. I feel like I may have heard something fall off to the left a little bit, and like right here, this character <laughs> went kind of left, I guess. Uh, here's something else. So I was talking about pre-life on that of the like the foot falling down, right? Um, pre-life also applies to things you haven't seen yet. So not just things that haven't happened yet, but things you haven't seen. So it, you kind of do it right here, like kind of, with this arrow coming in. No, you don't actually. So we see this before we hear it. And there's nothing happening in front of us right now. Like this hit. Like in that second or two, nothing's happening. Sound design, sound, sound design wise, right? The music, yes. 
but in sound, nothing is going on. He's just looking at the camera. He's like, yeah, what's up? I'm badass. Yes, but right now we have this character off stage right who is going to be coming in, and we could totally be hearing that before it happens, right? And I guarantee that in the original we do hear it, for sure, because they're Blizzard. <laughs> I'd be willing to gamble on that. Here it is. We hear the, the whistling of the arrow, but he's staggering back because he was hit by an arrow, you know? Like, it already happened. So it's kind of... It's, it's a little bit... Uh, like, this, this is a very, very common symptom of early sound design. Like, I'm guilty of it in my earliest stuff. Totally. I didn't design things I didn't see. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool, here's like something I can sync to, and I designed that thing. I'm like, oh, something else I can sync to. This, now this thing. But not once was I thinking like, oh, what's happening behind the camera or to the left and right? It's, it's just as important, if not more important, to help build your world out, right? Instead of having hard cuts from scene to scene, your audio reel would you recommend a fade to black as a palette cleanser? Mm, no. I don't like it. But it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's probably a subjective thing, you know? I think that there was one, one extreme example of somebody who had like a, who was that? I don't recall who it was, but they had a white noise, like a and back. And the gist, it was kind of a stylized, the whole presentation of the thing was kind of a, uh, excuse me, it was a stylized, like, like you're watching a TV and like, it's like changing channels and you're watching different parts of like different channels have different parts of the reel. So interesting, but the was kind of obnoxious. And I feel like silences are kind of a, a, a silent version of that where it's like it pulls me out and I'd, I'd much rather your reel expresses your sense of flow more than it expresses like your sense of like here's my my isolated thing here's my isolated thing here's this other isolated thing like out of context because I feel like that's that's going to be much more it will speak more to your aptitude when it comes to things like flow that's what that's what I think but like Matt says he's Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure as well that some people do like that. So, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so, I did see you mention uh, Gecko, sorry, Juan, that this is older than other work, and that might be the mistake. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, I think this is, is that Caleb? <laughs> Caleb Hart sub, what's up? <clears throat> uh, if you're, if something's not, up to standard, then it shouldn't be in your reel. Just full stop. If you think that you can do better, then do better. Just put your time in, right? I mean, when it comes to redesigns, redesigns have no limitations. It's not like doing in-game implementation work where there are like hardware limitations and and uh, like timing limitations and 3D limitations and all these things. With this, with linear media, you can do whatever you want. So this right now, is an indication of what something will sound like if you have if you have no limits. So if it's lacking, yeah, it's a big problem. And I I, I would encourage you to to fix that problem. <clears throat> All right, so we're getting near 530. We're at, we're at 530, look at this. So I think let's just jump through uh I mean this other stuff like prototype stuff, the sound, I'm not nearly as as worried about as I am with stuff like this. Because this is indicative of what you think the industry sounds like and where you what you have to offer that industry and this stuff is more of a representation or it's you're communicating to your viewers or your potential employers that you have skills beyond sound like, like doing like sound design specifically you can do implement, implementation you can do some coding and that's super really really strong and, and really useful <clears throat> so I'm less worried about like the beeps and boops in this like wizard thing. Was it a wizard? I don't even know. Whatever this was. <clears throat> like this doesn't sound that good. Right? This sounds so loud compared to the rest of the sounds. But I don't really care because you're not doing it for that reason. It's like you're showing your coding stuff, right? So, I don't know. So in terms of distinction, I would say that right now you are not standing out. Because despite the fact you have you you apparently have a lot to offer, <clears throat> you know, with the coding and with the with the five point one and with the design and with the implementation and with all these things, you have a lot of a lot of skill sets, a lot of experience. But this is it's a hard to watch. B, 
I, I wish I had a website that had more info about you and like your schooling. If I had seen you went to VFS, I'd be like, oh, cool. I would immediately have more of a personal connection to you just as a, as a random, like, you know, as a, as a hypothetical potential employer, I would have more of a connection to you personally than just this standalone video, right? Uh, <clears throat> to gloss over presentation, having an opening card with your contact info is gonna help. Having that info here also is gonna help. Having titles that aren't this font, this color, and no background, and so much of the text is gonna be better also. Making sure that you have consistent um, presentation of the text, like drop shadows or not. Uh, again, I was saying that having you know a Jamie Muller style background is really good. Um, <clears throat> For material, it's like, I don't really have a clear idea of what you want to do. We kind of skipped over that. I don't know what you want to be doing, man. Because you've got this Blizzard stuff. And then you have these little, like, I don't know, test game practice things you did. But this doesn't tell me anything about, about what you want to do. And having a site would solve a lot of that problem. You'd have your bio there, and you'd have things like your favorite games, and things like what you're working on now, and things like what you've worked on. And that would be really helpful to like just know more. But right now, this is more confusing than it is than it is getting your information across, unfortunately. Um, but that's way better a problem to solve or to have to solve than your stuff sucks. <laughs> you know, because it's not bad. It's not it's not great, but it's not bad at all. It's good. It's good content, and it's it's again it's it's, it's showing that you have a lot to offer. I think you just need to frame it in a in a more um, in a more deliberate and controlled kind of framework, okay? Uh, I suspect that Matt agrees with most of that. <laughs> Just knowing that. But of course, Matt, if you have any more, anything else to add, then, uh, then feel free. Um, okay, I think that pretty much does it. I am going to go ahead and get back to work because I have some stuff to do before I call it for the evening. But, oh, sorry, before I do so, um, Juan says, would you suggest removing all the redesigns? No. I mean, No. I think that if you if you think you can do better, then do better. That's what I think. If if you think this is what you have to offer, this is the best you have, then leave it up. But it sounds like you don't think that. And if you think that, then I question why it's here. Because if you can do better on something that isn't such a high bar to hit, then perhaps that's uh that's worth doing, you know? And I would even I would even suggest that you learn from what was difficult about this piece and perhaps what you could improve. Um, perhaps some notes that I give, I've given you and Matt's given you and the chat and perhaps some notes you had from instructors or your peers and use those notes and move forward into another piece. And kind of just, because the thing is no project's ever finished, right? It's only abandoned. So if you want to abandon this piece and do something else, that, that sounds awesome. That's going to be a great, I think that'll be better in terms of you, you refining your craft than just like doing the same Blizzard thing forever and never being as good as Blizzard. <laughs> or like just being as good eventually, hopefully, you know? It feels like a, a misstep. So, all right. Uh, I'm gonna do one, one more of these. Um, thanks a lot, yo. And I, I hope, uh, I, I hope I see a V2 one day, you know? I, I realize it might have, might have been a bit harsh, a lot of, a lot of me just tearing you up. And I, I wanna be very clear that this is all very constructive, and I, I know it takes a lot of a, uh, a lot of effort and courage to even make this thing in the first place and get up on stage, <laughs> and have someone take, take a look. So, um, definitely, if you have any any more questions, uh, feel free to hit us up and um, and uh, and ask. Happy to answer. Okay, let's play some Celeste again, not Madeline. Play some music. Let's play a remix. This tune is so good. Ugh, it's so good. Mmm. Mmm. All right, thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. I have no idea about 2018 guest hosts yet, but I'm looking into it, all right? <laughs> and uh, Matt, if you want to post your links, man, as always, then feel free. And if you're considering going to GDC, then please go and come to our talk, all right? <laughs> yeah, I'll see you around. Thanks a lot. <laughs>